Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at kurtosis and skewness, which is a deviation from the normal distribution. This topic is covered in essentials or principles of investments as well as the CFA exam. Now these topics are statistical in nature. So I will not be going over how they are being computed. I'm going to try to explain how they get used or the meaning of them in a finance or an investment perspective. So when you read them in your textbook, when you see them in an investment context, you understand what does kurtosis and what does skewness means. As always, I'm going to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to supplement and complement your accounting as well as this finance course so if you're looking for additional resources check out my website farhatlectures.com in the prior session we looked at the normal distribution and it's very important that you are familiar with the normal distribution or symmetrical distribution before we look at the session so the assumption here you understand what a normal distribution is if not look in the playlist of this chapter and or in the prerequisite down in the uh, description and I'll have the playlist. So you understand what a normal distribution, it allows us to calculate the probability and, and uh, basically have statistical inferences about the data. It tells us a lot about the central tendency. It tells us that mean, median and mode are equal and that's very important. And obviously it is symmetrical. It means 50% of the distribution lie on either side of the, of the graph and we can use a standard deviation as a measure of variation. And that's very important because in the prior session, we talked a lot about standard deviation. So this is what we know about the symmetrical distribution or to be more specific, the normal distribution. Now we're gonna be looking at distribution that are not normal. Now, how do we know distribution is not normal? We measure that by something called skewness, how, how skewed it is. So what is the, there's one simple formula to compute the skewness and that's taking the mean minus the median, dividing that by the standard deviation. Now let's think about it. If for a normal distribution, we said the mean and the median are equal to each other, what, what happened when we have two numbers and we subtract them from each other and they equal to each other? My four and a half year old would know this, the answer is zero. Therefore, if we have zero divided by the standard deviation, my four year old doesn't know how to divide, but I can tell you, you will get a skewness of zero. So if the skewness of the data, when you compute the mean, the median, and you take the mean minus the median, if the skewness is zero, it means it, it is, it's a perfect normal distribution. It doesn't have to be zero to be considered normal distribution. It could be 0.5 within minus or plus 0.5. We could still consider it a normal distribution. But the point is we can measure that skewness. So the skewness measure the asymmetry of the distribution. What do we mean by the asymmetry? It means it's not symmetrical. It means the middle does not cut it in 50-50. So let's take a look at an example that's not symmetrical if we look at this graph here this is this is this data is positively skewed or there is a right notice here there is a right tail there is a right tail um, so what what could be an example of this positive skew data for example household income in the u.s if we look at the household income uh, most of the people uh, they might be making uh, right in this area let's assume this area is um 70,000 to 150,000. So the majority of the people will make this much. Then you have at the end of the tale, few people like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, they make millions or billions of dollars. Therefore, the data, when you when you draw the graph or when you dry, draw the histogram, it's going to look like there's a lot of people on this end, which is the fat tail at the end, right tail. We have a right tail at the end. So a positive skewness of a distribution from an investor perspective uh, indicate, not from an investment perspective, that an investor might expect frequent small losses and few large gains. If we're looking at returns, we have few losses because those are small and large gains. This is from an investment perspective. So it's more desirable by investors because there's there's a probability to gain huge profit that can cover those frequent small losses if we are looking from a return 
perspective, if we're looking from a return perspective. Let's take a look at a negatively skewed or left tail, left tail distribution. Now, uh, kind of, I'm going to give you a simple example about, to illustrate the negatively skewed. If I gave an exam and most of the students, it's an easy exam, most of the students did well, they got in the 70s, 80s, okay, they, 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 they mostly fall here, but I have few students, only few students that get in their 20s. Therefore, I have few students here. So this will be negatively skewed data. This is what a negatively skewed data would look like. But I forgot to mention that with the positive skewed data, the mean, the mean notice is greater than the median. In the negative skewed, the mean is less than the median. It's just something you want to be aware of. If you did the math, it, it, it does it does it does show itself. So the negative skewness, which is the left tail of the distribution, indicate that an investor might expect frequent small gains and a few large losses if it's a negatively skewed. Now in finance, whether it's positive or negative, we, we always assume we are dealing with a normal distribution. We'll try to make it a normal distribution. So that's one thing to, when we're looking at the data, make sure to know what's the distribution of the data. Is it Because what we do is we assume it's symmetrical. So you want to make sure you, you understand what positive skewed data and negative skewed data is. Another, another, another thing that you need to be familiar with when it comes to distribution is the kurtosis of the distribution. The kurtosis measure the fatness of the tails or the peakness of the probability distribution relative to that of the normal distribution. Now, the kurtosis basically measure the likelihood of extreme outcome. Okay? So, what do we, how do, first of all, can we compute kurtosis? Kurtosis, And the answer is yes, we can compute kurtosis. Now, we're not going to compute kurtosis, but if we're looking at a normal distribution, it should have a kurtosis of zero. So let's take a look here at the kurtosis of kurtosis of zero. If we look if we look at these lines, notice here line N, which is the black line. Hopefully you can see it. This one here has a kurtosis of zero. So this likes this looks like a normal distribution, okay, with a kurtosis of zero. And what we call this to be more specific, if it has a kurtosis of zero of a normal distribution, we call it meso kurtic distribution just the name of it it doesn't really matter because we have three type of kurtosis so the first one is the normal which have a kurtosis of zero now we have something called lepto kurtic distribution shows a heavy tail on either side indicating large outline outliers it's easier to see the lepto kurtic not from a tail in this graph from its peakness so if we look at this red line here it has a kurtosis when they compute the kurtosis it's equal to three which is positive when that's the case it's called leptokurtic now what does that mean you cannot see you cannot see the tails but if you i'm going to just assume this is the line here you're going to see that these tails goes across like they have a large outcome large outliers indicate large outliers so an investment a leptokurtic distribution, if the data looks like this, should that investment return may be prone to extreme values on either side. So they can go to this side and they can go to this side. But notice here, it's also, it has a peak. It has a peak, but it is risky. It's risky because you could have extreme measures on either side. Now, the orange one right here, it has a kurtosis of two. Well, it's still extreme, but not as extreme as the, as, uh, as the red line. Simply put, you can say that the, the 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 more it peaks, the the larger it spreads out, basically. So it's riskier. Now we also have we also have what's called platakurtic distribution shows a negative kurtosis. So if we're looking at the light blue here, the blue and the pink, they have negative. But let's focus on the pink and the blue. So notice here, this is the pink. And this is the blue looks like a semi circle. When we compute, those are kind of, in a sense, they are normal distribution because they're they're all symmetrical. If we, they're all symmetrical. They're all symmetrical. Whether it's three, two, one, or zero, they're all symmetrical. But the kurtosis of it is negative. Reveal a distribution with the flat tails. Now, what does that mean, flat tails? Well, if you think about it, if you look at the, let's look at the semi circle here. Notice there's a small 
outliers in the distribution. So basically, this, they, they don't have large outliers, like when we started with the kurtosis of three, and I told you that kurtosis spreads out. When the kurtosis is negative, there's not large outliers. And outliers means there's risk, there's risk. So an investment, this type of distribution is desirable for investments because there's a small probability that the investment would experience large return. Now, extreme return, not large, extreme extreme return. Now, if you want, if you're talking about return, you want the extreme return to be on the positive, but also that extreme return could go on the negative. So an investment with a, with a large kurtosis, which is leptocurtic, could have a large positive or a large negative versus a platocurtic distribution, the the outliers, the, you don't have large outliers. So you don't have, you're, you, don't, you, you should not be experiencing extreme return. So again, those two topics, kurtosis, kurtosis and skewness, they're statistical in nature, but we use them in finance. So the purpose of this session was just to kind of tell you how we interpret them in a finance context. I hope I made the point. In the next session, we would look at how to measure risk premium to talk we'll talk about risk aversion and we'll measure and talk about the sharpie ratio as always i'm going to ask you to if you like this recording please like it share it if it benefited you it means it might benefit other people share the wealth and don't forget to visit my website farhatlectures.com if you want complement and supplement your accounting or your finance courses such as this course good luck study hard and of course stay safe